Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line right now, UFC fighter Tyson Pedro. Mate, welcome, first of all. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, for people that can uh, obviously listen to this, uh, hopefully on uh, the Listen app, if they're not already, I uh, do suggest they do so. But they can see the video version as well. And I've got to bring up... Uh, what a strategic shirt you've got on. I'd like to say it was strategic, but this is pretty much all I wear. Once you make once you make a beer brand, brother, that's all you wear. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did that come about? Like is that is that something that you're like when you got into the UFC, you're like, nah, you know what? I don't really want the belt. You know what I want? Beer brand. Uh no, nah, it didn't happen like that at all. <laughs> like uh um, uh, I got injured. I was pretty much doing nothing with my life and, uh, stuck in, it stuck in a rut. And Ty was like, um, uh, Bam Bam, another UFC fighter for, if you don't know him, if, if, but, uh, uh, he was like, do you want to make a beer? And I like beer. So that's pretty much, um, what I've done with everything in my life. I like something, just have a crack at doing it. Tied to us, of course, you just mentioned, uh, heavyweight, uh, absolute like pop culture, like just banging down yeah. the shoeys. Everyone knows him for that. Um, are you guys related in some way? Uh, he was with my sister, so um, he had the baby with um, my sister, and yeah, the, we've got a nephew. So, so. like family, yeah. so you well, you guys had a, a podcast at some point in time, didn't you? The half cast yeah. podcast. Yeah, I can say that right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're all good. That's the point of it, bro. That's the point of it. So That's... we're we're hoping, um, uh, yeah, we're, we wanted to try and start that up again. Obviously, you know, doing a podcast, it's not that easy when you've got to um, get him punched in the head every day. So. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll try and figure it out, uh, and but we're just never in the same uh, same place to be getting it done. Yeah, that's like uh, it's like now I feel weird when I'm like, hey, want to watch the Wog Boy? I'm like, want to watch the Nick Giannopoulos uh, f- film? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, all that political correctness isn't for me. It's, it's, it's getting a bit out. It's getting a bit out of hand. They took some of my favourite words. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, you you brought up the point of uh, of the beer company, which kind of happened. I'm assuming during your your layoff, where you probably spent a, a fair bit of time uh, drinking the said beer. Um, how does yeah. it go having, I think you it's the longest uh, layoff in UFC history. It was four years, 12,000, yeah. uh, sorry, 1,200 days. Uh, yeah. First of all, as a, as a fit man in his prime who essentially lost four years of that, how does that play on you mentally? Um, Oh, obviously, I went through my roller, uh, like ups and downs, brother. I'm not going to lie to anyone. I fucking went through shit times, just like anyone else. Uh, um, we all go through hard times. I'm sure of it. But uh, there was, uh, like, I guess a lot of people that were there that stuck by me to get me through. Um, I still feel like I've got to get Shogun back for those four years <laughs> that he took away from me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I started. I uh, I met some good people that were teaching me how to do businesses and. I, um, so I got to open up um, restaurants and stuff and try different things. So And I had a beautiful baby, uh, my daughter. So, you know, sometimes, uh, like a lot of the times with my life, you think it's going to be the worst thing and then end up some of the best things come from it. So uh, uh, as bad as it was, um, I, I know it was meant to happen for a reason. And I've come back with a completely different mental attitude and fortitude uh, to be able to get through. And I know I'm a better fighter because of it. So it all, all worked out. Now, if you don't mind me asking, and, and once again, feel free to to not answer it if you don't want to. But how dark did it get? Uh oh, man, like um, like it obviously got bad. But um, drinking doesn't help. Uh, I was, some of the times you're sitting in a dark room by yourself. Um, you start secluding yourself from everyone. Uh, um, I I try like even my wife. Um, she's she, like. I'm going from doing something that I love that's uh, creating me to be the best version of myself and then I'm uh, three three or four operations and I'm just in a hole sitting in the cast in bed and uh, it's just um, sitting there with your thoughts. Uh, I did a lot of things to try and work on myself and you're still, still going through all of it. So I think uh, it was probably harder for the people around me seeing myself, uh, seeing me sort of uh, not being my best self. And um, not listening to them, and then the, the, I always knew that I was going to be back fighting. So I I knew that no matter what, even how bad it got, I was going to be back there. But it's hard to tell other people that uh, um, that's the case when they're seeing you not being your best self. Now you, you kind of already answered it, but how how close did you come to actual retirement? Did it did it cross your mind at all? Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> not really. Um, there was like uh two there was like two points where I was like, fuck, am I going to get back? 
And that was more of it. I think the question was more whether I'd get kicked from UFC for not fighting for so long. Um, and I think that was more of the uh, the thought process because I always knew I was going to fight again. Like there was there was no doubt about it. But for everyone else, I had close people to me, family telling me to retire. But uh, I, that was never an option for me. Well, that was the thing I wanted to ask as well. Is there, were, there were reports around when it was 2018 when it happened that, that you did get cut. And you're saying you, the UFC didn't actually cut you? Never. Uh, man, I don't know if they lost my sheet like <laughs> under one of the filing cabinets or something because I was like, I've, I saw people getting cut and I was in the background like, are we are we good? So uh, I, I was, um, I don't know, someone blessed me with that, but um, yeah, I was uh, I was amazed myself. I, I even had media with people to go on, man, I think I might get cut and stuff, but uh, uh, um, props to the UFC for keeping me and believing me and I'm thankful for that and uh, yeah. I was glad that I got to show that I was uh, supposed to be there. Yeah. Was there any benefit to like not getting cut? Because for people that would know that you get paid per fight, is there like a, do yeah. they give you like a base sort of allowance? Like, is there, what's the benefit of not being cut? Fuck no. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Mate, I didn't Man, want to well, say it. Uh, I didn't want to uh, say uh, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was broke out here. No, <laughs> no. I'm lucky. Lucky I had good sponsors. I'm um, lucky my wife she she was already knowing teaching me how to deal with money and stuff because I had no <laughs> idea how to deal with money. So, uh, um, yeah, I had good people around me, good sponsors, and um, yeah, obviously just um, making it work. Uh, my yeah, it was just I, if I put it down to the main reason I we survived that was probably my wife. Yeah, and I get I guess the like. UFC fighter Tyson Pedro gets you like that five dollars more on a PT session than like former. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, killer PT sessions. <laughs> because, because, because no credentials. So if anything happened, I'm like done. <laughs> yeah, but I tell you what, like I don't, I'd like even if I saw you fight, I'd be like, mm, but he's like former UFC. <laughs> <laughs> like he's was he's all right. He was low level. Yeah. Well, like and and this is the thing. It's like so. Just to like recap it, there was three knee injuries that did you get misdiagnosed? Yeah. Was it poor surgery or what? What happened? Uh, so the first one I did hamstring and uh, uh, in my so I tore my ACL. They um, put the ACL back together uh, with the hamstring. The hamstring was uh, I, I told that it was in the wrong tunnel, so I pulled the wrong way retore it when I came back to try and fight. Uh, then during COVID, I uh, did my meniscus, and then they were pretty much like, you have to just have a full knee reco again. And then they did like a blue place where they take your IT band as well. So yeah, that was that was after 12 months of recovery. So I was deep in it at that stage, and then I had to make the decision whether they do a quick fix, and they said it'll probably tear again, or I restart the whole process again. And um, that was probably one of the hardest choices I've ever made, um, just to just deciding because I already, already, had already known what those 12 months looked like yeah. and it was not good. <laughs> so to um, to make the decision to know you have to go through that again, like, yeah, that was pretty rough, but um, I'm, I'm glad I made that choice. Did the second time, did you attack it different mentally? Well, the first time I was like straight away, like, like yeah, let's get after it. I'm going to be in the gym <laughs> doing this every day. Second one, I was like, man, that's pretty shit, eh? I don't know if I want to go back to the gym. Third one, I was like, Fuck this! I was like, "That's it. <laughs> I was like, "I'm done. I'm done. I'm out." Just hopefully the leg goes. Just cut it off. I'll do like uh, something else. Yeah, as a guy that you know, you, you've been in martial arts for a, a, a really, really, really long time, and uh, you've been—I don't know. Like, I know you work hard, but like athletically gifted, I say to the six foot three, good looking man. But like, what did you have to like? Uh, did it really set you back in terms of like, man? I actually have to take these years off my life. I'm, I can't even recover. I can't even recover well. No, I think it was a good thing. I think it was all meant to be. And um, I feel like uh, the fitness and recovery, like um, I'm, I'm in better shape than before, before for sure. Oh, and like without a doubt. And like I feel and better, like my body feels stronger. The knee feels strong. So uh, I would say that, um, yeah, it's all meant to meant to be. I will I will say this: like, I don't plan on being in the cage after like thirty six, like thirty seven. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm I, I'm I, I'm fully aware of the short lifespan of MMA. Is like uh, I think that changed a little bit after having my daughter. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I plan on having a big couple of years. Is is it the title? Is it is it money? Like, what motivates you? Oh, the title for sure. 
Like I wouldn't even be in. I, 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 I've already told my wife if I didn't plan on trying to train to be number one, then I wouldn't be fighting at all. It's like if you if you're not planning on trying to get to the top, it's like it's not a it's not a very good game to be in here for money. It's like you get you get your head punched in if that's the only thing you want to do. Speaking of money, I mean you're a, a Penrith guy. Uh, <laughs> you see, obviously, some NRL players. Uh, walking around a fair bit, they get paid a, a fair chunk. Do you think mm. that the money for MMA is is where it should be, or where it could be, or at, like obviously you see a lot lower guys? Obviously, yeah. if, obviously being a fighter, I want to get paid more. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that's like that's a, that's no doubt. Like, do I want more money? Yes, would yeah. love it. It's a weird question. Uh, but, so, but yeah, but so but so does everyone. Um, uh. I mean, I was in the red in my first for my first three camps, so it's not about money for me. It's like I I I flew over to Jackson's, went to America. Um, I was in the red first three camps, so uh, I know it's not about money. It's um, uh, but yeah, obviously, and it's uh, UFC is a place where if you use your platform, look at Bam Bam. Yeah. If you use your platform, it's like that's that's what um being in the UFC allows you to do. Is that uh, is that why you're in New Zealand? Because the US dollar like is better than the Aussie dollar. <laughs> <laughs> hey, New Zealand's New Zealand's dollar is not too good at the moment, I guess. But uh, <laughs> petrol prices aren't either. So actually, they've gotten better. But um, yeah, New Zealand's really growing on me. You got a knee, you got a new knee, mate. You just run everywhere. Well, <laughs> when it, like we're talking about like NRL players. Uh, quick question: uh, Which NRL player could beat you? In what? MMA. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> are there any? Look, I know that they're the tough guys of like the Australian sporting world, but is there anyone you go, man, they do all right? Well, man, I've sparred Gallon. Gallon goes all right. I, like, obviously, I'd destroy him on the ground, but um, <laughs> like, uh, Fafita's, Fafita's tried to, uh, Fafita and Dugan have tried to arc up to me before, but I've seen them punch, so there's <laughs> that's a no deal. Um, Man, there's there's obviously some swing and the, you know what uh, the the um, NRL guys are crazy strong in wrestling. Yeah. Like yeah, and it's like you got six guys coming at you from all different angles. Oh, that's. <laughs> not what, that's Mate, no, nah, I'm clipping yeah, that, yeah. and that is yeah. the promo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's NRL guys. Uh, <laughs> so the, uh, no, um, uh, NRL scares me more than fighting for sure. How many games and stuff like non-stop, mm. like train every week. It's like we fight once every three months. It's yeah, like they're pl- playing every week. Like that in itself is there's a toughness to it. So how's um Penrith Panther uh, Nathan Cleary going in the MMA? If he if he was to jump in there, come on, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> If nothing else, I'd assume that he'd have a good chin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're lucky, lucky mate. <laughs> that that comment now beats the last promo, so I got to push the uh, the six guys out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love uh, it. I love um, it. He's, he's, he's the man. I love the, I love Nate. He's good. He's good quality. Now, I've got to touch on the fact that, like, when you were in your darkest times, you you did uh, state that. Your father, the the great John Pedro, uh, was one of the me- one of the men to get you out of it. Um, and of mm. course, that's what every loving father would do. But then I need to mix it in with he's also the same man that would spar you and has knocked both your teeth out. Can you explain yeah. the relationship to? Uh, I don't want to say no- a normal parent son relationship, but t- to so many people, they mm. they don't understand that disconnect. I, I don't either. Like we should probably see someone about it. Like I don't know. Like to be honest, I've been I've been trying to figure it out for thirty one years. But uh, it's a love hate relationship for sure. No, uh, um, I, no, I love my dad. We uh, we've obviously gone through some uh, bad stuff, but so has everyone. Like uh, everyone's got their rough story that they've been through hardships. Uh, I've only been knocked out twice, both times by my dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> touch wood, but. Uh, it's just, um, you know, when kids were growing up, kids kicking the footy around, we were choking each other out. Like, fighting's in us. Uh, that's why I am where I am today. We've always been fighters, our whole family, my sister. Oh, I was going to say my little brother, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, my sister's a gangster as well. So, um, yeah, it's uh, just... Uh, also, uh, like... I guess Islanders in general, Pacific Islanders, are known for getting a few hidings. So <laughs> it's like, uh, 
it's a maybe a, a bit of cultural thing. So we're we're all trying to be better. Did you did you have a choice in a career in fighting at all, or was it just like Dad's going to whoop you for free? You may as well get paid. Yeah, no. So Dad didn't want me to fight at all. Oh, really? I'm, I'm like, yeah, I actually got a big hiding for telling him that I was going to fight really? against his world. <laughs> so, yeah, he wanted me to go to university. So um, yeah, uh, that that didn't go down well with my dad. So it was it wasn't until I made the UFC because uh, remember when he was uh coming up with uh, uh mixed martial arts, the King of the Cage days, there was no money. Yeah. And like you you're just getting like your body destroyed. Dad's got like dad's got so many injuries and not getting paid for it. So it wasn't until they saw me get into the UFC that he was like, All right, you did it, son and then he was like I think yeah. that was the first time he said he was proud of me in my life. So that was that that was pretty sick. <laughs> I like how, I like how he said three camps you've been in the red, you've got a new knee <laughs> it's like, yeah, Dad, I, I did exactly what you yeah. thought. Yeah, yeah no. it's going, it's going so well. <laughs> it's, uh, it's good, and I've got, to, I've got to touch on. I know you've touched on it a thousand times, but he accidentally stabbed you with a knife. Please yeah. just recap that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're we're playing the flinching game. I don't know if anyone <laughs> plays that with their family, uh, where you try and make your loved ones flinch, and if they don't, you punch them. Um, and then it just escalated, went to chairs and then dad used to do this trick with a knife where he'd throw it and catch it with the other hand. But obviously with age, you get a bit slower, missed it, went straight into my chest. So yeah, it wasn't a fun day, but I also wasn't allowed to tell my mum. So (laughs) 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 it's like, we're like, we'll keep that one quiet. It was like, yeah, I got, I actually got in trouble for that because I was the one that started the game. Is uh is is like the great John Pedro is like being scared of your mum is that the is that the biggest is that his biggest rival? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> now I'm also going to ask a question too. What are the chances that I could potentially chat with him one day? Oh, for, yeah, easily. Yeah, for sure. Oh, sick! Because yeah. I, I feel like everyone is going to want to talk talk to that man. And like you said, he is one of the the pioneers, if not the pioneer, for bringing. Mm. Um, MMA to Australia. How do you feel with that? Like, do you, you obviously wear that that very proudly. Yeah, for for sure. Like that's why um like we came up with James Tahuna, Brad, uh, a lot of guys that started the MMA scene in Australia. But uh, um, it'll be interesting if you get him on because everyone will go, man, he's so lovely, <laughs> joking. Like, yeah, that, <laughs> people grow. <laughs> it's like everyone says the same shit they're like your dad is lovely like he never did any of that stuff i was like oh yeah i must have just made it all up <laughs> it's like <laughs> this, this scar this is a scar here yeah 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 no that's uh that's great now um mate just uh heading into obviously your, your next fight uh, what what's like what are you doing differently or a sort of same same team same guys like what can we expect you going in um I'm better. So that's, that's always good. Like, uh, um, just growing, growing as a fighter and person It's like, I uh, just imagine if I knew what I know now as a, like as a 20 year old, when I was about to come get into the UFC. So it's, uh, it's always crazy. I uh, looking at it like that. It's, the camp here is crazy. Um, the, uh, training at city kickboxing with these, all of these badasses. I've been loving being at this gym. It's like I'm a small fish in this in this gym, and I love that feeling. Like I, um, yeah. So it's a it's a humbling humbling experience uh, when you go, especially in Australia because we don't have any mega teams. Yeah. So it's like um yeah. So I'm that UFC fighter guy. You know what I mean? It's like um yeah. it's very humbling, and I really enjoy being in a gym where not only they've got UFC fighters, they have the top one percent. They've got the champions in the UFC. So uh, I've I've really been enjoying uh being around that sort of energy. You get to be in the advanced class? <laughs> oh, I, haven't, I haven't got into the advanced class yet. <laughs> I just imagine you with like the mums from Box Fit, like, yeah, nah, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still on the Thai boxing. Hopefully one more camp and they'll let me into the advanced class. <laughs> oh, mate, absolutely love it. Uh, before I let you go, I um, uh, really appreciate the time so far. I just wanted to ask, like, when this is all said and done, how does Tyson Pedro want to be remembered? A good question. Uh... To be honest, I, I like I've been thinking about it a bit lately. I don't. <laughs> After I retire, <laughs> brother, I'm out. Yeah. I'll, I'll be on my I'll be on, I'll be on my ranch. I'll be with my animals, like cut off from society. I don't want to hear about no one's dramas. <laughs> I'll just be riding my horses, like with my with my family. That's it. I'm out. <laughs> oh, mate, absolutely love it. Best of luck for everything in the future. Um, and 
I'm I'm going to chase your father. I'm going to get him on this podcast because I, I can't wait to hear that lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thanks, bro.